good afternoon. We're looking at 11.37 uh, a.m. So I guess technically good morning and welcome to day 502. We're at a stunning 45 degrees and, and very sunny, so I'll be happy with that. I'm actually on my way to get some gas right now. Uh, looks like Friday is always my fill-up day, and we had the Yacht Club last Friday, and that took that took uh, more over a quarter tank of gas. So I'm going to go do that, head downtown, we'll see if there's anything nice. Then I'm headed back to the camp for two classes. We'll get those done, and then we're in for the weekend. Uh, the BMW C3 E36. Uh-oh, check it out. We got a flashing light up there, which means there's cops or sirens coming through. Wait, let's... Yep. Here they come, boys. I think it's an ambulance. Uh-oh. Hope everybody's okay. The light's back on. Somebody else is coming. Probably cops now. Or another one. Yep. We got that guy. Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome back to the castle, boys. It's a beautiful day to come over to the club. When the light goes yellow and everybody stops coming straight through, you can go through when you're making a left. Instead of stopping in the middle of the intersection like this Lexus driver. These people cannot park. Holy crap. Look at this. Jesus. 2.45 home, I just put on some work jeans. We're up to like 50 something and sunny outside. You know, 50 and sunny feels like 70 and cloudy. And that's what I love about San Diego is it's never really hot. It's between 65 and 75 most of the year. Maybe some 60s and January, February, December uh, time frame, but the sun's always out. So you go outside when it's 60 and it's so comfortable. You can just be in shorts and a, light, and a short sleeve shirt and sunglasses, of course, knowing me, and you'll be fine. And that's what we've got today. Low temperatures, but plenty of sun and little wind makes it feel awesome. And since it rained all day yesterday, and we had the lawn fertilized a week, two weeks ago, 10 days sometime recently, and now today's been relatively warm and sunny, uh, it has grown like two inches in the past day or two. So I think I'm gonna run out there now and grab the trimmer and do that, that always sucks. That's the worst part of mowing. It takes me like 35 minutes to meticulously trim the whole property here of about an acre, and uh, then only 25 or 30 minutes to mow. So that's the time waster. But I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do here. Um, I'd get paid today if I did it across the street, but there's a lot more grass over there and I actually feel pretty tired. So I'm just gonna hit it up here, get that done, maybe clean out the garage. I've got tons of crap in there. And uh, if I get an energy boost, then I'll run across the street and do that when I get my money. Okay, just got a call from my dad. It's uh, 3 o'clock and he just bought a skid of mulch, cypress, 80 bags, 82 cubic foot bags of mulch that's going to be delivered here tomorrow morning. Which is not the best timing, but I'm glad he's getting on this and doing stuff. So I'm going to go just mow here now. I'm thinking, I'm looking for my belt. I put my work jeans on and now I don't have anything to keep them up because I'm because I'm 142 pounds at 18 and six foot three. Freak's sake. I don't know what it's doing in here, but anyways, so I'm gonna go mow now, as I've said like 40 times, and then he might come over and he's looking at trucks and stuff for June. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a big cluster, you know what, right now, because I wanna get this done, and if we're having mulch delivered tomorrow, that means I need to get these leaves ready and out of here so we can put mulch down. They're really bad back by the boxwoods and these little bay windows here under the house, under the garage windows, as I showed you before, but it's done to that. So I gotta come all the way down here. This is the bad part. Look, that's just full of leaves. Down there is too. The biggest spot, like even the, even the corner of the porch behind these boxwoods. So I'm gonna try to get all of this done today, which is gonna be like an hour or two, but it is at least it's sunny. So we'll get we'll get the mowing done and I'll show you that in three seconds for you, but 45 minutes for me. Just before 7.15 and check it out. I've been working for a while out here, guys. I just went in and took a shower and went and got a haircut. Now I'm back and I'll show you my progress. Everything got trimmed and everything got mowed and then I got on uh, working on the leaves up here. And I told you before I was worked over about here to the lamp post. Well, I kept going. And I kept going, all of this down into the house there. I got about 90% of them out of here. Kept going, kept going, 
all the way to the pine tree. That's right, boys. She's done. It was nice. I didn't have a jacket on, so my arms are just beat to hell from reaching under bushes and stuff. They're all cut up and it hurts and it sucks. But I got 90% of what was in here out, as you can see. You, you know what that looked like before. And uh, the mulch will be here tomorrow, and we'll put it down Sunday, maybe, or next week. Or I'm not in a big hurry. They're just going to drop off a skid probably back here in the corner. But I mowed everything, and it looks nice. Now, I actually did the diagonal cut here in the back, which is a pain in the ass to do, because my backyard, as far as grass goes, is so short, and it's a hill, and there's a bunch of roots down there where I've never been able to grow grass, as you can see, and the mower doesn't like that. But I did it and it paid off. Also, notice how derelict the patio is here. Check it out. It's supposed to be that color under there where the umbrella stand usually sits. And over the past probably three or four years, since we've power washed it and treated it with some chemical that cleans it, it's gotten like this. It's all black like Cleveland. So I talked to my dad and he's going to come over and we're going to take the power washer out of the garage, which has been in there for probably 10 years. When he bought that, we still had the Porsche 930, so you know it's been a while. And um, we're going to clean that up this weekend or next week or sometime soon before we go and uh, get everything nice and uh, that'll look much better. Alright, so I'm off here deep in the wilderness and I just found this. Shit. I saw something from inside the house the other day, obviously the root ball, and now I come out here and now I've got work for a chainsaw, which is just phenomenal because that's what I need to do right now between all the other crap that's going on home and school and yard and stuff. So now I've got this uh, 50 foot tree, 40, 30, 40 foot tree that I'm gonna have to chop up, turn into stuff that looks like this and throw back there somewhere. And you likely remember that within a few weeks I will be installing the pump back here and it goes here. Check out the PVC pipe that comes out, completely cocked. Why is it down there in the water? There's nothing on top of it. PVC does not bend like that unless you put a lot of pressure on it. So at some point, something hit that and uh, held it down there for a long time. That stake's all wampus. That one's still there. The end of the pipe, originally I had duct tape to that. So this is going to be a pain in the ass when I want to come back here and fix this. None of this uh, sand slash clay bar was here before, so I don't know where that came from. This is a lot deeper and wider than it used to be, and my beach is getting larger over there. Since I've been putting the pump back here myself for the past four or five years, this has completely changed. Um, just the layout of this, that's scooped out much more, and it all makes sense. This is what we learned in seventh grade and what we're revisiting now in ecology in school. How it goes around this corner slower, deposits its sediments, goes around this one faster, picks crap up, and will then go and drop it on my beach over there. And these bushes are new. I used to be able to jump from this bank onto my beach without having to come down here where it's significantly lower elevation wise. I remember I did that once and I, the water was too high and I caught it with my heel and it splashed all over my shirt like 10 years ago, but there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done back here. Uh, this tree is shot, so uh, I wonder if I could push that. I remember that tree being dead. No, I gotta get over these thorns, hold on. All right, so I remember trying to push this years ago. It looks like most of it is over me. It was pretty weak then. Let's get some of this bark out of here. That was easy. Now I have to touch this. No, nope. give it a push. It's moving around quite a bit, but it's strong enough down here. So when I have the chainsaw out cutting this up, might as well get rid of this one too. And I think I found another contender. Maybe this one's derelict enough I can push it over. Oh, uh, maybe. Let me try two hands. Nope, same story. I'm going to have to get the chainsaw with that. So that makes three that are going to have to come down and be cut up. And check that out. That piece has been up there for much more than a year. And uh, it hasn't blown down yet, so I'm going to have to work with that as well. I don't know how many people try to cut down little trees with tiny little hand saws and Rolex watches, but I know there's one, and it's me. Alright, so this is going to be a mess because it's going to fall into this little one here, but uh, I'm going to see how far I can get through that with this. Yeah, well, that's better now, isn't it? it? Took like a half an hour, my arm's killing me. I went to get the chainsaw, I don't have any chain oil. And uh, we're going to have to bring it back here anyways to take care of that. But I got this thing down. I'll cut it up later when I get the chainsaw going on. But it fell into this one, which was dead. As you can see, it totally uprooted. So it was small enough, I was able to take it out with about uh, five minutes of cutting there. And uh, I took that back there, so it's gone. And we've got quite a few more to go. So I have to get my dad over here. We'll get some chain oil, figure out the fuel mixture on the, on the chainsaw. 
clean stuff up back here too. Only with wheels that god awful can you see how weak the brake components are. Truthfully pathetic that you put 24 inch wheels on a car so you can see the 6 inch brake rotors. Piece of crap American cars. Alright guys, wrapping up Friday 502 here out on the porch. As you can see, it is very cold out here. This is going to be the end of the cold front here. Actually tomorrow. We had another slight one come in now, this afternoon, evening. I met Taylor downtown. I forgot my stupid camera though at home. Or I think it was either at home or in the car. Anyways, we just went downtown and had ice cream. It was cool. Uh, so we're back now. It's about 11.15 at night. We can see the moon up there and a bunch of stars, so it's clear. That's why all the heat's going out. It's about 34 degrees right now. Tomorrow's going to suck. It's going to be like 41 and rain all day. Um, Sunday gets better up at 60. We're going to do the Ferrari thing. And then 70s next week will be awesome for mowing and shorts again and stuff. So uh, today was really good. It was a nice day. It was beautiful. I got a lot of work done, and I feel good about that. Uh, I did a really nice job on the yard. You know, sometimes if, if you mow yards a lot like me, you just get used to it. You throw your quiet comfort headphones on, you jam out to some music, and just do it. But then there's the times when you grab the trimmer and you really get into it and you think about it. And after you work and you work hard and you get something nice, you feel good. That's just how it goes. So um, I was really meticulous with it today and it looks really nice. And if it's sunny on Sunday, I'll, oh, you saw it today. It's a yard. You don't really care and you shouldn't. But anyways, it's done, and I feel good about it. And you know that now, and that's going to be it. And I'll talk to you on Saturday. Good night.